What's going on everybody? Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to install a two inch spacer lift on your Ford Bronco. Now, a very important note here before we get started, I'm gonna be installing Rough Country's two inch system, but I'm gonna do it in a way that's quite a bit different from how Rough Country would show it in their instruction manual. And the reason for this is I'm basically trying to make it a little bit more simple for those of you that are doing this at home in your driveway and also mitigate the risk of damage along the way. The reason I say that is the way Rough Country normally has you install this does require you to hammer the axle out of the hub. But the other big issue is that once you have the new spacer installed on that factory strut, Rough Country typically has you hammer out the studs on the lower mount. Now, in my experience, hammering these out doesn't typically work and you usually have to use a press, which a lot of folks don't just have on hand sitting around their garage. So the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna allow you to drop the lower control arm, give you a little more vertical space, pull out the strut that way, and you will be able to leave the factory studs in that lower mount. Overall, I think it's a cleaner and better way to do this install, but I want you guys to be aware of that beforehand. So with all that out of the way, if you're looking to just turn wrenches and start tearing your truck apart, I have some time codes you can use to skip to down in the description that are gonna get you to the sections you need for either the front or the rear install. But before we dive into it, the other thing I wanna cover are some of the pros and cons of a spacer lift, so that way you guys know what you're getting into beforehand. Now, there are typically two big pros right off the bat with spacer leveling kits, and that's firstly, that they are very budget-friendly and affordable, so there's not a lot of financial hassle here, and secondly, they're extremely simple and there's not a lot of extra equipment that goes into it. And when you see this Rough Country kit, it comes in a very small box, it's pretty rudimentary, it's not a lot of hardware or equipment there, so that stuff is good, but there are also some big drawbacks. And one of the main things being that because they're so simple and budget friendly, the quality can be lacking. And one of the other things to worry about is that it's not necessarily gonna provide any improvement in ride quality or off-road performance, other than the fact that you're getting a little bit more lift out of the vehicle. So I think I've probably rambled on long enough, but long story short, just make sure that you know the kind of driving or off-roading you're getting into before you pick your suspension setup. With that out of the way, let's get into the install and I'll show you how to put this thing together. Grab a 15 millimeter socket and remove these six bolts that are holding both skid plates on the truck. That way we can drop them completely out of the way and they're not gonna interfere with us doing work on the lower control arm. Now come around to the back of your lower control arm and if you follow the sway bar end link down on the bottom, there's gonna be a nut here that you'll need to remove with a 21 millimeter socket. That'll get the end link out of it. Then we're also gonna use an 18 millimeter socket to remove these two nuts and bolts here that are holding the mount that keeps the sway bar attached to the frame. So if you do this on both sides, we can pull the whole sway bar out of the truck. That way it's not in our way. At the top of your strut tower, you're gonna to have three nuts holding the top hat of the strut. We're gonna loosen these up, but we don't wanna completely remove them yet. And this one in the back is the hardest to get to, but you can kind of push the liner out of the way and you may just have to use a wrench on the passenger side because it is a little tight back there. Next, you'll want to grab your 18 millimeter socket again, and we're going to remove both of these nuts holding the lower mounts for the bottom of the strut. We're going to need to remove these lower control arm bolts and adjustment cams next, but before you mess with any of this or loosen it up, go in and make sure you mark this with a Sharpie or a paint marker, whatever you have on hand, just so you know where these cams are lined up, both on the front and rear mounts. That way, when we go to reassemble this later, you can get it fairly close and somewhat aligned to start, and then you'll still wanna take it to a shop and have them professionally dial it in, but this is gonna help a lot in the long run. Slide your floor jack underneath the front section of your lower control arm here to give it some support, and that will work on pulling the bolts out. Take a 15 16 wrench and slide the box end over the nut on the inside of the lower control arm. Then you can grab a 21 millimeter if you need it and use that to support the bolt on the outside. 
If you need a little help breaking the nut free, you can use your foot to push against the wrench from the other side to crack it loose. Come back over to the top of your strut and we're gonna remove the three nuts that we loosened up earlier. Now, as you do this, obviously there's nothing supporting the bottom of the strut now, so you're gonna wanna hold this up to take the tension off and then just gently guide it down between your tie rod and your axle. All right, folks, so here's the rundown. Typically, if you're following Rough Country's instructions on how to do this kit, you're gonna need to hammer or use a press to push these factory studs out of the bottom so that way you can replace it with the machine bolts that they have. Now, thankfully, because of how we're doing it with the lower arm dropped down, we're gonna be able to just leave these studs in place and we're not gonna need this. We will, however, have to flip the coil over around. And on this side, there's gonna be an alignment pin that needs to come out. So I'm just gonna grab that with the pliers here and you should be able to just kind of wiggle it free. There we go. Go ahead and move your strut off to the side for now. And the next order of business is gonna be the actual spacers. So when you open the box for your kit, you'll see that all the spacers are identical for all four corners, but they don't come with any of the studs installed. So you're gonna to need to take your little hardware bag, empty that out, and we're gonna to need to put these studs in ourselves so that way we get a resulting spacer that looks something like this. So when you grab one of these spacers, it's kind of hard to tell what's top or bottom, but basically if the stud goes straight through like that and there's lots of play, then that is not gonna be the hole you're gonna wanna use. So that means that this side is the top and we're gonna want the stud to come through and then poke out from here. Now the powder coat around this does make it pretty tight. So typically if you can start getting it threaded by hand, it'll kind of etch its way into the powder coat. And there you can see it's starting to poke through. You can also use the pliers to Twist this a little bit and get some better, better traction on it there. So once you've got your stud almost all the way through, it's gonna catch once it hits these vertical grooves. And for the next part, you're gonna need to dig into your hardware here and you're gonna have two nuts that are different sizes. And the larger one here is made so it doesn't thread onto the stud. The smaller one is going to thread onto it. So we're gonna just kind of get that hand tight, nice and snug. Now this top nut is going to be a 17 millimeter. So what we're gonna do is grab our impact with a deep well socket. And we're just gonna hammer this on here. And as it pulls the threads downward, it's gonna suck the stud into the metal. And that way we get a nice solid tight fit. Okay, there you have it. You can see that we got that sunk in. It's nice and flush with the inside lip of the spacer here. So now we're gonna do that for the other two holes. And then while you're here and you've already got everything set up, you might as well do all four spacers so that way they're good to go as you go through the lift. I've got all my spacers ready now and I brought the strut back up onto the bench. So from here, it's pretty obvious. You're gonna line up the holes, push this thing into place, and then you're gonna reuse your factory hardware to mount it to the top hat of the strut. Now, what I will say is while this does fit on here, the design of the spacer with this lip makes it really hard to get a socket over it, which means that it's hard to get a torque wrench on here. So as you thread these down, you're gonna need to get them as tight as you can with a regular wrench. And then if by some chance you have a really thin walled socket that you can get over it, that might do the trick, but just make sure you get them locked on there as best you can.
As you saw, I managed to get the strut up into place with the spacer on it, and I left those top nuts pretty loose, so there's still a little bit of wiggle room and some play with this. And we're getting to the tricky part now, where basically we've got to line up these bottom studs with the holes in that lower control arm. And then once I have those through, I'm going to reuse the factory hardware. And then all we have to do is get the lower control arm seated back into the mounts on the frame. So it's a little easier said than done, but I'm going to work with it here and see if we can get it put back together. All right, folks, we are down to the final battle now, which is gonna be getting this lower control arm back up into its mounts. And there's not necessarily one dead set way to do this, but using a floor jack and a jack stand is gonna make all the difference here. I typically like to start with the mount on the backside, lift that up first, get it in place, and then work on the front mount. There's a little bit more room to come from the front, so that one, if you have to fight with it, is not quite so bad. Well, I managed to get the lower control arm put back together. Everything's bolted up. So now I'm gonna take my torque wrench and we're gonna just lock down these top nuts, the lower mount and anything else that I got loose. And now that we've got this all back together, we can also put the skid plates back on and the sway bar as well. So once this is all done, then we can work our way to the back. All right, so if you make your way to the back of the truck now, we'll work on removing the rear strut. But one of the first things that Rough Country has you do is remove this plastic clip for the inner fender liner. So there's a little more flex to get to the three nuts holding it at the top. It does work decently to get in there, but I'd say that removing the whole liner actually makes it quite a bit easier and will definitely make it easier to see on camera. So I'm gonna pull the whole liner out of here and remove all the plastic clips and screws holding it. And then with that out of the way, you'll get a better view of how this thing's held in. With that fender liner out of the way, you can see the top hat a little better here with these three nuts that are holding the strut. And we're gonna loosen these up with a 15 millimeter wrench, but you saw that I also kind of tapped this metal flange back a bit just to give us a little more room. Now, as you go to loosen these, on the passenger side here, you can pretty much get to them all from the front, but on the driver's side, you may have to come around from this gap behind the frame to get that last one in the back pocket. Basically, we just wanna get these lifted up so there's some exposed threads, but we don't wanna take them off all the way. Thank you. 
Moving underneath the Bronco, you're going to want to grab some jack stands that will be able to handle the axle coming down on top of them. And you just want to position them kind of where I have them here so it can get a good stable base with the axle sitting on it without it crushing any of the lines or sitting lopsided. In this case, I have the truck on a lift, so I'm actually going to move the whole truck up and down. And then the jack stands will just help to compress the struts or move the axle upward when I need it. And then I can allow it to drop when I need to. Now, if you're doing this at home and your truck is already on jack stands in the driveway, you'll probably want to bring a floor jack underneath the pumpkin here use that to kind of manipulate the axle and get it to move up and down when you need that's just one of those things that depending on your setup you'll have to figure out now use a ratchet with an eight millimeter socket to remove this screw holding the bracket for your abs line so that way you can get a little bit more slack remove this bolt holding the lower mount of your track bar using a 24 millimeter socket Now we're gonna remove this bolt here that's holding the lower mount of the strut. And when you go to back this out, you're gonna to wanna to use a 27 millimeter socket. And it's worth noting that Ford likes to torque these down to about 6,000 foot pounds. So it's gonna take some work to get this loose. You'll probably need a breaker bar. You may need another pipe on top of that to give you some more leverage. But once you have it free, back this thing all the way out and then just make sure you don't lose the nut on the other side. The only thing holding the strut up now are these three nuts that we loosened up earlier. So I'm going to support the spring, pull these off, and then we should be able to lower the whole unit out from the bottom. All right, so if you think back to earlier when we were doing the front spacers, the rear is basically going to be the exact same story. So I've got my pliers here. We're gonna pull this alignment pin out first. There we go. And then with that out of the way, we're gonna take our spacer, just slide it over the holes into place. And just like the front, we're gonna reuse the factory hardware as well. So thread this on here, get it going by hand, and then just snug it down as tight as you can manage. With the top of the strut in place loosely, we still have some wiggle room to get it adjusted down here where it can meet the axle and I can line up the hole. So I'm going to run the bottom bolt through, tighten that back up, and then we'll work through the rest of the reassembly process. With the lower mount locked in now, all we need to do is bring the axle up. That's gonna compress the strut and it's gonna force these studs up through a little bit further in this top mount so that way we can finish tightening down the nuts at the top. And then once all that's torqued and locked in, the strut will be in place and all we have to do is reinstall the stuff we took off on the axle and we should be good to go. Well, folks, that's going to bring us to the end of this two inch spacer install. But there's one final super important step that you don't want to skip, and that is getting your truck professionally aligned after you have it all done. You have altered the suspension geometry quite a bit, and if you don't get it aligned, it's going to wear your tires funny and probably steer a little weird on the road. So make sure that you take it to a shop and have that done before you go out on any long road trips or start wheeling this thing or daily driving it. With all that out of the way, I do think that the final stance looks great. The extra two inches certainly helped beef this truck up a bit. And in this case, we actually went ahead and threw 37s on it. But if you're looking to pick up the parts that we used in this video, you can head down in the description below. It's going to shoot you over to our website. And and as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.